I love Aaron Gordon's potential, but I've already talked about him a few times on my channel, so I don't really feel like diving into detail with him again. Uh, Julius Randle, I made a video about him not too long ago, previewing his 2018 season. I like Larry Nance Jr., but I don't know how many minutes he's going to really get in the Lakers' front court like that. And you don't need someone else on the internet telling you that Kristaps Porzingis is amazing. So, now that we got those out of the way, let's immediately give you footage of Markel Fultz, which makes no damn sense since this is a power forward video. Uh, Philadelphia has a few creators. There's Markel Fultz, Ben Simmons, should be dribbling the ball a decent amount of the time for this upcoming NBA season. And then, of course, they have the big man in the middle of Joel Embiid, who is probably going to end up taking the most shots for them. So you're going to need some lower usage guys. And that's when I look at one of their power forwards, Rashawn Holmes, who's kind of gotten lost in the shuffle of their storied too-many-centers thing. Uh, Holmes... I mean, I don't know if he could ever be like a big time scorer or anything like that, but the dude can shoot from everywhere. He's been an okay three point shooter based on his previous season. I think he can build on that one. So when you got Joel Embiid posting up and you're going to need that power forward next to him who can stretch the floor, maybe Rashawn Holmes is that guy. Maybe he can develop that three point shot and be that floor spacer for Markel Fultz and Ben Simmons drives as well. There is Dario Saric who's also on this team, but I don't know if Saric has the three-point chops to really do that. I think he has more of a floor game, whereas I think Rashawn Holmes, I mean, he might be that shooter for these Sixers. So I think Rashawn Holmes has some potential as a shooter for these Sixers who can uh, finish from basically everywhere on the floor. Good roller, decent athlete as well. His free throw shooting has been right around 70%, so hopefully that's a good sign for his shooting. We'll just have to see. Uh, Marquise Chris of the Phoenix Suns, who I guess he's in, wants to be the next Draymond Green type of player. I'll be honest, based on his first season from a defensive standpoint, it might take him a while to get to that. But I think just as an athlete, he could have potential in this league as something I, I would give him probably a better chance to be a defensive player than i would to be like a ball handler like draymond who gets a bunch of assists i would hope that his shooting can be the next step forward for the phoenix suns uh to go along with um i don't know just a better all-around understanding of how to play nba basketball i guess because his mental lapses were kind of a thing in his rookie season but that's okay and part of me kind of th sees like a Thad Young sort of comparison to Marquise Chris. For him to get to that point, he would have to just get to being like okay enough defensively, progress on his rebounding, and develop his like cutting game. Maybe that's his uh, avenue in the NBA, just being an athletic power forward like that. Maybe his all-around game will get there. I don't know. The one guy I would give a better chance to developing that all-around game would be Drajan Bender. So the Phoenix Suns get two on this one. Uh, Bender has been listed sometimes as a center, given that he's 7 feet tall. I mean, given the dude's thin frame, I don't know if he can get to that point. But I wouldn't be surprised if Bender grew up as like a shooting guard or maybe a point guard at times, because his handle as well as his passing ability for a big man who's 7 feet tall is kind of ridiculous. I mean, some of the moves the guy pulls off, he can legitimately like beat defenders one-on-one -on -one sometimes, and... If he can really develop that part of his game, then I think opposing defenses are going to have some tough times defending him because it's like, who do you put on him? Do you put a smaller guy so you can keep up with him when he's dribbling, or do you put a bigger guy on him? It'll be an interesting thing. His rookie season, he didn't play that much. I think he just wasn't ready from a physical standpoint. He's young, even for a dude who's going into his second NBA season. And, I mean, the guy was just so freaking skinny. It, it makes sense that someone like Marquise Chris would have gotten more minutes than Bender in his rookie season, but I do think Bender is going to end up being the better player among those two for the Phoenix Suns. I haven't even talked about Bender's defense yet, who where he's shown potential of being a, a defender who can switch among pick and rolls and provide help defense. And while he's not a huge athletic talent, I would say he's moving around pretty well to the point where he can be effective defensively. And I just see Drajan Bender as an effective two-way power forward. Is it going to happen this season? Yeah, I think he's going to be a real rotation piece for Phoenix uh, for this upcoming year. Finally, Pascal Siakam. And typically with rookies, 
they're not that good on defense because the NBA game is just really fast and it's a bit smarter, you could say, perhaps than a you know in college or whatever. Mainly just because you know more spacing and stuff like that. Uh, but Siakam's defense was actually pretty decent for the Toronto Raptors when he was in there, to the point where if we fast forward a few more seasons, I could see him being one of the better defensive players in the NBA. Also an athletic guy himself. I just want to see if the three-point shot becomes a thing for him this season, and I think that's what we're going to be waiting on with him. He's kind of like the power forward version of Michael Kidd Gilchrist, if you will. And I think the Raptors would gladly take that on, given that they just lost Patrick Patterson, and they're going to need that power forward who can be that two-way uh, player. Maybe Siakam can do it. 